guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome to our first brand new tribe for a brand new experimental update. We'll be traveling our way through the Harmony Islands, which is a name I'm sure a few of you will recognize. We did use it for a very, very old series almost a year ago now, but I thought it would be fitting to bring it back to life considering the nature of this update. Not only do we have an incredibly in-depth pattern system to enjoy, but we can also now breed our critters with uh, some of the carnivores that we come across, the bear yinas as they're called now. So because this is still a testing update, there are um, some bugs and glitches that we'll run into here and there. I personally have had the game crash many, many times in this update, so fingers crossed that we'll be able to get through this without any problems. But first and foremost, I mean, the entire place is different. We have all brand new textures, new shading, all of the icons have also been altered, and of course, we no longer have access to the mutation menu. Now instead of a mutation menu that takes over control of the entire island, all of the pairings in our nests, we go based on each individual creature. So Eve and Adam both have their own personal mutation menus inside their genetics, where we can decide which genes would be best to mutate onto their babies. Like Eve, for instance, actually has the blind eyes in her genetics, so what I might like to do is um, go into one of these slots and make sure that I select the normal eyes so we can breed that out of her line early on. Each gene now has a 50% chance of passing onto their babies too, so much higher than the 10 and 30 that we had before. And there are a ton of genes in here. We actually have access to some of the prehistoric genes too, but of course we need to unlock them first by um, inviting animals with this gene into our tribe. So we'll have to find the mountain again somewhere if we want to unlock all of those as well. There actually aren't too many genes aside from the cosmetic additions that we can choose right away. Even things like the um, antlers and the ram horns require us to um, perform attacks and spend time in cold climates. Climates, so we're going to need to do quite a bit of exploring before we can unlock every last one of these uh, genes for our babies. For now though, we will place the normal eyes right in her mutation menu because I don't want to see the blindness popping up in our babies so soon. And likewise, let's uh, take a look at Adam's genetics too. He has a short-sighted eyes in his genes, so we should probably give him the normal eyes too. And then he also has those webbed hind legs, so to avoid any frog toes in our baby's futures, we will also give him the normal hind legs just in case. Just to make sure that we're breeding out those um, big flaws early on so that we can really enjoy some of these harder islands once we get to them. The normal genetics aside though, there are so many options for this new marking system. Adam is actually showing off one of the brand new markings, which is the mask and he has the red pattern and the black pattern in his pattern slots, which is why um, he has that very, very deep, I guess, chestnut color surrounding all of his fur. Each pattern has a different shape that it can use. It has uh, different densities, different um, sizes as well. I mean, there are just so many different combinations. It is my absolute favorite part of this update, hands down. Eve almost looks like she has been completely erased. Like somebody took a big eraser and took off all of her markings because she is completely white. She she has white fur in both of her slots and unfortunately no pattern, but I'm hoping that uh, maybe we can get some interesting critters out of this little pairing. Aside from that too, we also have two brand new colors for the gems. We have um, pink and we also have yellow, so we should be able to uh, create some pretty unique families, not only with the patterns, but also with the gems as well. Now I guess we might as well get started here. We'll go ahead and um, have them breed. Eve does have one more slot left in her mutation menu though, and since she doesn't seem to have any more major flaws, and of course because we don't really have access to many of the uh, more important genes, why don't we go ahead and see if we can play around with the patterns a little bit too. We'll see if maybe we can get some uh, stripes on her babies. I think that would look really, really cool, especially against her pale fur. So can she possibly pick up some of those berries? I think um, Adam might actually be better at picking the berries because he at least has the two running legs. So we'll have him pick those and then he can breed with her. And then he might as well do a little bit of exploring, I suppose. She could also uh, stick her nose out of the nest, poke around the grass a little bit, and then jump back in too, just to contribute on this turn. Let's listen around as well and sniff around. We do have uh, some more berry bushes right here and even some roots to dig up if we have a baby with um, the digging palm maybe. Another nice part about this update though is that even if the creatures don't have the ability to um, use whatever they're trying to interact with, they can 
can still attempt the action. So that counts toward all of the uh, genes that we can put inside the mutation menu, but it also gives us the chance to dig up the roots even if we're not carrying the right trait. We'll investigate that a little bit more once they start having their babies though, because I am so curious to see what sort of baby we're going to get out of this pairing. Let's go ahead and skip our very first day. Oh my goodness, no marking unfortunately, but little Cora, how adorable are you? You almost look like a little anime without the panda patterns. I'm actually not sure if the panda patterns are still in here though, because I didn't see it in um, any of these slots, so I'm not sure if maybe it's gone or maybe it's just harder to find, but um, hopefully anime will be able to return even in this tribe as well. We are certainly shaping up to be a spiky bunch of creatures though, aren't we? Eve with her spiky body is probably going to um, take control of all of her children, I would imagine. And the poison fangs are still in their genetics too, so that's good to see. Unfortunately, she did inherit her um, father's short-sighted eyes within her genetics, so we'll just have to keep a closer eye on that to make sure that it doesn't um, affect any of her babies in the future. I do think we're going to want to jump ship pretty early on. We'll probably migrate over to um, the right island. Both of these islands should just be the um, easy grasslands islands, and as I understand it, as we keep traveling on and find um, more and more islands to go to, there will be challenge islands along the way that'll help us unlock like the medium island and the hard island after that. So yeah, we need to do quite a bit of exploring, and that's why Adam and Eve, I'm sure, are feeling quite restless. But first, you might want to gather up some food. We can go ahead and pick some more berries, and this is actually a good way to um, show how we could attempt to attack the berry bush too if we wanted to. Wouldn't be the best idea because it is um, our only source of food right now. But if we bring Eve over here instead, then we can have her attempt to dig up this root that we smelled out before. Let's have her use her two uh, turns to try to dig it up. Unfortunately, it didn't work, but that should, like I said, count toward um, the digging paw instead. Let's go into Korra's mutation menu to see if it worked. Yeah, the digging paw now has two out of 50 dig actions performed. So if we do that 50 more times, then we would have the opportunity to um, mutate the digging paw onto our creatures. So let's back out of here and skip the day again. We'll want little Korra to um, grow up so she can toddle her way out of the nest, of course, and start her own adventures. Let's have her go off this way so she's right next to her father, and then Eve should be able to settle herself down inside the nest so they can have yet another baby together. We'll breed them and we'll pick up some of the grass and, of course, the tasty berries. Gotta have those tasty berries to feed to all of your babies, and of course, it'll count toward on possibly giving us those nimble fingers for the mutation menu later on. Oh my goodness, Eve, your patterns, your no patterns are going to be very hard to keep off of your children, aren't they? Thankfully though, Anime did inherit that lovely claw that her mother has where um, her sister has the velvet paw instead. So her sneaky sister could possibly try to uh, spy out some bunnies on the island while she goes and swoops in for the kill. Let's have her go a little bit further into the grass, actually. She can sneak her way over here because I would like her to possibly carve a path over to these flower ports. That way her entire family can uh, move along with her pretty soon. Let's gather up all of the berries so we have plenty to eat. And then we'll have Eve hop her way after her daughter to try to spy out some more resources. Oh my gosh, look at all of these roots. Okay, you guys are really going to have to um, try a little bit harder to dig those up, I think. We have so many roots, it would be such a waste to leave them all behind. For now, we'll pick up the grass though and skip the day again. And we'll see if uh, maybe any carnivores would like to stumble out in the process. The Bear Yina is that it's going to take a little while to get used to the um, brand new name. But I am really looking forward to maybe inviting one to our tribe someday in the future. That's another reason why it would be a good idea to give ourselves a little bit more room to work with. Because that's also more room for the carnivores to potentially spawn in. So I think we'll let Adam and Eve have just one more baby. And then we'll send them off on their way to um, their brand new island to explore. Let's bring Adam over here because I'm pretty sure, yeah, there is a nice big berry bush to pick from. We don't want to forget about that. And then you can keep carving your way through the grass over here, little one. You did find yet another berry bush back there and a mole. Okay, maybe she can get it with um, her sneaky velvet paw. We'll let her give it a try on the next turn. Will she have her third gem? I don't think so. She needs one more day to grow up, so she's going to have to be very quick with the small. Let's go ahead and skip the day again and see what their third and um, final baby, oh my goodness, for this island. Oh my gosh, twins. We already have twins in the nest. And finally, finally, their little babies with the mask, just like their father. So they have um, gray markings, I guess, or actually it's gray fur. 
Okay, their base fur is gray because they have um, the white and the black fur. And then the dark brown color is um, from their markings with the red pattern and the black pattern. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Can we take a closer look at that if we go into um, the family tree? Oh, even the spikes look different. I love the mask. It can look a little bit overwhelming at times depending on how all of the different markings line up, but they are so cool. If the panda patterns are truly gone, then I bet we could still find a creature who looks up pretty close to Animeme herself if we get the right combination of mask markings. I absolutely love this little guy though. Kuvan and Rodukro. A very, very fitting way to end out this um, starter island, I think. Oh, for that matter, I almost forgot. We also have um, a home island immunity gene now. So yet another special immunity gene that I'm guessing we're probably going to want to try to hang on to. It looks like um, most of our creatures ended up inheriting B and the home island immunity. So um, Korra is the only one who's completely different with A and G, which is very good because if we can't run into any um, wandering creatures out in the wilderness, then we might need to make sure that we can uh, breed them together in the future. But for now, we'll go ahead and pick our berries because we need to um, wait until the babies can toddle their way out of the nest, of course. And let's see if um, little Cora can actually get to this mole. If she moves over here... Oh my goodness, there's so many moles back here. Cora, you are in heaven. Let's go ahead and swipe at it though. There we go. You managed to take that one down so you can gather up the meat on the next turn. And then we might want to get your family out here too to do a little bit of a family mole hunting, I guess. A little bit of family mole hunting. Slightly easier than trying to um, dig up all of those roots, especially with their big giant clumsy claws. In fact, I think Anime is going to follow you right away. She's probably feeling very, very curious about where her sneaky sister ran off to. Now all that should be left is to have Eve come over here to pick up some more berries for her children, and then we can skip the day again. Oh my gosh, I just love these little kids. I feel like we should almost name uh, this one Kuvan Bandit or something. Wait a second. It looks like their portraits are kind of swapped. Oh, how are we going to tell these guys apart if they're swapped? Oh my gosh, that is going to be absolutely impossible. But yeah, like the masked bandit, maybe, Kuvan. I feel like he's going to cause them quite a bit of trouble when we move islands. Let's go ahead and skip the day again, though, so we can start carving our pathways deeper, especially as Akora, our first baby, has finally grown up. So let's have Anime go ahead and pick up the meat for her, since we want Anime with her sneaky velvet paw to try to get around these moles. In fact, we might need to be a little bit more patient here. We might need to bring an enemy up closer and then just wait a couple of turns before Korra jumps in there and tries to swipe at a few because if she jumps in now, she's going to um, risk getting caught by these moles. They're probably going to turn and see her right away. So instead, we could just have her father pick some berries, pick a couple of those berries for her brothers, and um, I suppose Eve could do the same. And now we should be safe enough, right? Oh, well, maybe not. They are looking very, very close our way. You could always pick a couple of berries too. That might be a good idea. And then you can jump in here and slap this guy from behind. Excellent. So they are becoming very, very apt hunters very early on. I think they're going to be able to um, survive quite nicely once we move islands too. It's almost as if she has uh, discovered these ports all on her own after slaying so many of these moles. So maybe she is calling to her parents now, letting them know that she has found something very interesting that they might want to investigate. We could have little Kuvan talk his way out of the nest so he can follow too. And of course, I'm little Rodukro. We don't want to forget about you either. The good thing about these starter island is that we shouldn't have to worry about any birds in the skies, so it's not like these two babies are going to get swept away. But I am slightly concerned about carnivores, so we're still going to keep a close eye on them. Let's go ahead and clear out some of this grass again and then skip the day. And then um, within the next couple of turns, we should be able to make our way all the way over to those ports with tons and tons of food in tow. Oh my gosh, they have their second gems now. I love the patterns on his ears. They look so cute. They're very similar to him, his father's actually. I think they are still slightly different though. The masks are different and that must have something to do with either the density. Yeah, the density is different. The size is the same, but the density is different. Like all of these different options kind of make my head spin in all honesty because there are so many different ways that these can go. I don't think I am ever going to be able to 
memorize exactly what does what on all of these different markings, but that's okay because that is exactly what makes it fun, the surprise of it all. Now you guys definitely want to uh, start hopping your way through the grass, I think. We'll have you go ahead and pick up your meat and then see if you can get that very last mole. You might as well since you've gotten this far. If you could hop out to these parts, then you might be in a better situation. Oh no, I think she scared the mole. It saw her as she darted in between the grass. So you have missed one mole, little Cora. Unfortunately, you missed one mole, but you still did manage to catch us quite a bit of food. And now you can make your way over here with your sister. You two can both rest in the flower ports as we wait for the rest of your family to get all the way there too. If our new island has a swamp biome, then that should be really fun to explore. They changed around the swamps a little bit, so there's uh, more dangers in particular. All of the islands I've been to as well have looked uh, quite unique, despite the fact that um, I've only been able to find these flower ports so far. I haven't been to any of the challenge islands yet, so hopefully we'll be able to find that along our journeys as well. But I think we should be able to move all of our children over to the ports now. We could spend some time collecting berries, but to be honest, I want to get to those wide open spaces. This family needs a little bit more room to work with before um, they're ready to settle down again and have some more babies. We do want to make sure that Adam and Eve can have a couple more before they pass away after all. So we could have Eve maybe gather up uh, one berry and then scoot her way right up here to the ports. And then uh, why don't we have um, Cora do the honors? Since she has been catching so many of those moles for us, so much food, we'll go ahead and let her do the honors of taking us over to the next island. So I'll see you guys as soon as we get there. Here we are guys, Adam and Eve's restless family have already made it to their next island. Look how much bigger this place is. So much more room for us to work with. We have so many more resources too. Little trees that we can collect acorns from and I think I did see some shells in the water as well. Yeah, so we can try to gather those up. Even though we don't have the nimble fingers, they will at least help us toward them unlocking those in the future. We have some savanna tiles, I believe. It is quite dark when it rains, so it's a little bit hard to tell, but I think that this right back here with all of those thorns is on um, the brand new swamp biome. So we will have to explore that once we're a little bit stronger and once we have um, some more food on our hands, I think. For now, we'll take the creatures who can explore a little bit further down the beach. Adam should probably carve the path because he does have those um, poison fangs, so he should be able to protect his children, of course. And this berry bush, this is quite interesting. This is our first time seeing the poison berries. They have a very, very unique look to them. So that's how we can tell that they're actually poison. But I think because Adam has the poison fangs, he should be able to pick from that, right? If anyone else picked from it, then they would um, get poisoned. So they would lose some of their lifespan. That's why we don't want um, Cora or Anime to pick from it. But let's investigate this because I'm pretty sure that Adam should actually have a little bit of um, poison poison resistance? Yeah, there it is because of his poison fangs. So he might actually be able to gather from this bush without getting hurt. Look at that. Good job, Adam. Now you have a special berry bush that only you can pick from. That'll bring us a little bit closer to unlocking yet another gene in our mutation menu too. If we open this up, we should be able to find the toxic body in here somewhere. There it is, the toxic body. We need to perform 50 um, collect actions on the toxic berry bushes, and then we'll be able to unlock that for um, one of our future babies, I suppose. The poison fangs are also locked, and it says that we need the toxic body in order to mutate it, but we also need to travel to new islands. So I wonder if this is um, what they meant by the challenge islands? Maybe we need to get to one of the special challenge islands to unlock it first? I'm not entirely sure, but I would love to unlock every last one of these genes. That has got to be a major goal of this series. So go ahead and pick some more berries, I suppose, Adam. You can use your last turn on that. And then we'll bring your two exploring daughters out um, behind you to make sure that they can also carve a pathway up. Oh my goodness, and the fish. The fish are coming up to say hi, actually. I'm not sure if Cora's going to be able to fish in the water. She might not be able to swipe them up. She could still try if she had a little bit of extra um, energy in her, but for now, she's going to have to just wave to them from the shore. We'll go ahead and have Anime try to crack the shell, maybe? No, it didn't quite work, but um, again, that will count toward the nimble fingers later. And then um, I guess we'll just zoom out and skip the day. Oh, there we go. I think it's getting sunny now. That brightens things up a bit. Now we can actually see our tribe. So Cora, do you have the option to uh, fish these guys up? No, you can't actually grab the fish. So we might want to save that from your mother Eve 
or your sister Annamie because we know that they can get that with their big giant claw. We should probably send you off um, further down here to find some berry bushes. There we go. Because we know that she can at least collect from these so she won't be wasting her energy while we still need to keep our eyes on the food supplies. Eve, on the other hand, can come right down to the shore very close to where you were so she can um, set up a nest. We'll have Adam go ahead and breed with her so she can plop her nest right down here and he'll still be able to, of course, pick from his uh, poison berry bush. I guess he's going to feed those to his children. I guess that's what he's doing. At least he's not harming anyone in the process though. And now his two little twins can make their way around the other side of the island. How about we send them off this way to explore? There's plenty over here. I think I actually saw some kelp down there too. We have so many shells and so many crabbits. They are going to have a feast. If they can take down those crabbits together, they will be able to bring back so much food for all of their own family members. I guess Annamie should also try to keep up with her little brothers, and hello little guy. I think we might be able to get this leech right before he attaches to Annamie. We'll go ahead and uh, swipe the gold leech. So the gold leech gives us a tiny bit of food, but now might be a good time for us to do a little bit of a sniffing around too, especially since we're getting so close to the savanna biome. I believe the developers have said that the Baryenas spawn a little bit more um, actively in the grasslands and the savannas, so we might want to uh, set up camp around here somewhere if we want to potentially attract the attention of the Baryenas after all. But let's go ahead and see what Adam and Eve's next baby in this episode is going to look like. Oh my gosh, he has the mask again. Some of the colors do look a little bit awkward together, but that's to be expected when you have so many different options. Honestly, he almost looks like a wise old elder or something already with his graying fur. He looks absolutely adorable. Canoe Duke, right? Yeah, this is the guy. He has all of this graying fur on top of his head. I feel like he's going to end up being a, a very sagely creature who gives a lot of good advice to his siblings. Maybe he could even help track down his two twin brothers. Oh my gosh, they're so cool though. I'm not quite sure which one is which because um, their models are switched in here, but they look so, so cool with those giant patterns on their backs. He even has like little diamonds on the front of his legs too. Oh my gosh, that is awesome. But now that they're both fully grown, they can surely wreck havoc across this entire island. We'll have to see if they can find any of those acrabbits on the shore to possibly take out together. Yeah, there is actually one like right over here. If we scoot him over this way. Oh no, and he picked up a leech too. That's not good. We'll have to have your brother come over here and rescue you. And then um, we'll have to position them a little bit differently now. I guess some um, the crabbit is quite wise to our schemes. Not only that, but he has a giant shell hoard over here. Was this all for you, little guy? We might need to um, try to pick those up later on. We even have more of those toxic berry bushes up here too, so Adam, you should be quite pleased. Once you uh, deplete your stock over here, you can scoot a little bit further down the shore and uh, try to gather up some more for us. But I think this is going to be quite the interesting adventure. We already have some very, very unique little critters to follow on their journeys, so I hope you guys are really looking as forward to this tribe as I am. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!